I want to talk about this example here, which demonstrates a few cases of, well, first, a function that returns a reference, but also using other functions that return references that we haven't written. I don't really want to call what I'm doing a full trace of the code. You can see I'm not going to use a full scoping diagram. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, it's a question of, based on what you can tell about the, uh, the uh, code you've been given, to what level of detail you have to go into. So in this case, I'm mostly going to sketch out at a, on a, at a high level broadly what's happening at each step. So I have this uh, string called str, and it contains the text raspberry, which um, is a string of length 9, so indices 0 through 8. Um, this function here called getCharacter, if we examine it, what it appears to be doing is it finds the last index of the string, and then it returns a reference to the character of the string at that index. So notice how the uh, return type is char ampersand, so reference to character. And um, remember that dot at returns a reference to an individual element of the string. So what's being returned here is a reference to the last character of the string. And I just want to walk through this. Okay, so part one, I just print out the string. Well, that's, that should be straightforward enough. The string is just raspberry. And then I begin uh, creating references. So uh, on line number 12, I get string.at2. So I go to index 2 of the string. Recall that dot .at returns a reference to that character. And then I create a reference ch to index 2. That has the effect of doing this. In main, the name ch now is this thing. So I've used, uh, I've used a reference to create a new name for one piece of this string. Uh, one character inside the string. So when I write ch uh, is equal to the character x, well, I look at ch in main as this, so I guess I go here and I add the character x. And so then in part two, I print out r a uppercase x p b e r r y. Now, although this is sort of bizarre that I might create references into a string, keep in mind, if you recall from 111, we were often doing something similar. We'd often use pointers to reference individual characters of a string or an array. Uh, okay, so I get down to line number 16. Um, I again create a character reference called R1. R1 is going to be the return value of this, which returns a reference to a specific character. As I mentioned earlier, we figure out the length of the string. So this string has length 9. Length minus 1 would be 8, the last index of the string. And then I return a reference to the character at that index. And to me, that sounds like that means that on line 16, R1 is a reference to this. So that means that from, from now until the end of the function, R1 will refer to this character of the string, so um, the character at index 8. I, I should add that although these type of shenanigans are all sorts of fun for tracing questions, there are a few cases where creating references into a string or vector can backfire, uh, depending on whether you, how long the vector lives and whether you modify it and how long you keep the references. However, all of this is valid, uh, and you can try running this code, and you'll discover the output is, in fact, um, what we're coming up with here. So I then write r1 equals x, and so I go to r1, that's this character here, and I set this to be x. Now, when you're diagramming this out, you might find it a little bit more helpful to use the more verbose notation that I use for references between functions. So R1 is a character, but it's a reference, and, so, and it refers to this. You could also do that, as long as you keep in mind that when I use R1, it is no different than when I'm using this position here. But I'm going to stick with the more compact notation that I've been using. Uh, okay, so then I get down to, and so I'm now at part three, so I print this out, R-A-X-P. B E R R uppercase X. And now I get to part four. So uh, down on line 20, auto R2. Notice the lack of an ampersand. So R2, uh, the, the function get character is still going to return a reference to the last character of the string. But I then take that reference and I assign it to a variable that isn't a reference. And so that means, well, okay, what gets returned from the function? Well, it's a character. Uh, and it's going to be called R2. But unless I use an ampersand, a reference is not created. So on line 20, what I'm doing in, is just creating a regular variable of type char in main. And I'm storing into it whatever came back from the get character function, which in this case was the la a reference to the last character of the string, which will be the character x. If I then set that, so on line 21, I set that to z. 
then R2 gets set to Z, but I don't modify the string because I broke the chain. Here, I didn't create a reference. R2 is not a reference. R2 is just a copy of whatever you initialized it um, to be. So in this case, it's just going to be a copy of a character. And if I modify that, all I'm modifying is some variable. So in part four, I print out the same thing. Uh, and that's another example of how we have to be very careful with references that we use them all the way through. If I'm calling functions that take references and return references, I need to make sure that nowhere along the line is a copy being made. If I miss any ampersands, I make a copy and the chain is broken. And then I don't end up with this unbroken chain that allows me to modify my original string.